Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Yes, that is a Glock you see in front of you or a P80. It's not surplus. What we got here today is my uh, adventure into P80 land or 80% lower building land. This is my uh, first 80% lower of any kind I have ventured into. Um, just kind of got a hair up my ass, decided to jump on board. Um, two other friends of mine also got that same hair up their ass and decided to at least start getting parts to do their own P80 builds. Um, and this is my first attempt. I'm both very happy with it and very disappointed with it. Um, kind of wanted to make this video because I started talking to some of my friends that are, you know, into shooting about these P80s and I just discovered a huge amount of misinformation you know, I had people telling me, why would you want to buy one of those 3D printed guns? They're only going to last a few rounds and then they break. All kinds of crazy crap out there. Um, these are not 3D printed guns. Um, the frames are pretty decent quality. The only downside of them, really, is the fact that you got to finish up the last 20% on your own. Um, and you got to do that without screwing it up. That's the key part. And it really isn't that hard. I think I kind of screwed this one up. Um, I do think I will try again. Um, but so P80 is a company. And there are a few different companies that make things like this. Um, but I would say probably the most popular one is P80. This is actually my buddy's I asked to borrow. So I want to show you guys kind of, you know, how it looks to begin with. And the jig it comes in. Um, so this is the PF94... OC, is that DC? OC 80. Um, this basically will build you a uh, Glock 19. Now, P80 does make other um, frame sizes for different Glocks. They also make AR-15 lowers. I think they make some um, SIG lowers, which are kind of unique because if, I'm not sure if those come to you completed because there's no serial number on those because the module in the SIG guns is the serial number part. Uh, anyways, for the Glocks, um, you know, they would be serial numbered and it's got a spot for a serial number, but as you can see, there's nothing there because you are the manufacturer of this firearm, or at least that's how I understand it. Now I'm going to say again, guys, I'm not a lawyer. Um, these kind of do get into a legal area. You might say, I'm not a lawyer. Do not take any legal advice from me or anyone else you see on YouTube. That's just stupid. So... Um, I went with the Glock 19 sized uh, lower frame. These do come in different colors. Um, everyone looked at me like I was crazy when I said I was getting the green. Um, and then when I got it, I put it together. I think it came out pretty freaking cool looking. The combo here with this um, battle worn nickel boron slide against the green. It's kind of almost a dare I say Boba Fett-ish. I didn't mean to say Fett-ish. I meant like an ish, but I said Fett-ish. Um, or, you know, even a Master Chief Halo. Or hell, I mean, kind of, you know, the newer Battlestar Galactica, their pilot suits were kind of this color combo. Of course, yes, I know they were using FN pistols and Taurus carbine handguns. They, I don't think there's ever any Glocks, but the color combo is kind of right there. So I liked it, um, showed my friends, and I was all excited. I'm like, huh, I'm going to show you how beautiful this is in person. And they all still hated the color combo. So um, <laughs> there might not be a lot of fans of this color combo. But I fell in love with it. I think it looks slick. Um, so basically what you have to do when you get one of these, it comes in a jig like this. Now I'm not going to take this one out of the jig because I think that might have been where I screwed up. Um, so this jig just, you know, pulls apart. You got a little locking clasp up here. This pops in and out. Now, when I put this, you know, of course, when I first got this, I was very eager to feel how it felt in my hand and everything. So I did pop this out. But when I put it back in, you know, I, I'm not a complete idiot. I made sure that these were all, you know, lined up in this jig properly because you can kind of like not get it this in there quite right. Um... So luckily, my buddy, when he was showing me what he got, I was like, don't take it out of the jig. I think that's where I screwed up. He's like, don't worry, I didn't. So this one's staying in the jig. But this is what it looks like. So when you get a P80, um, basically what you do, you get everything you need. 
can see here, these are some pins and some rail sections. And then you get your drill bits. Now I will say, apparently he got one of the older kits, the newer ones. They're not even putting this larger drill bit in there. Really all you need is these two drill bits and a Dremel um, with some kind of abrasive remover and you're uh, rocking away there. So the first thing you want to do, and that's one of the, uh, and now mind you, this is the only one I've made. So if you want to make one of these, you damn well better watch a lot of other YouTube videos and not just this one. But basically what you do, you have three holes here to drill on each side um, that are two different, as you can see, drill bit sizes. And those are those. So basically you drill your holes. Um, and according to the directions, you know, they say just go in, do not go all the way through. So what I did, I just followed the directions. Went in, went in, went in, went in, went in, went in. A lot of YouTube videos, they will say, once you have the holes drilled, go ahead and take your drill bit and, and drill bit and actually go across. I did not do that. The directions say specifically not to. Um, and so I didn't. I'm thinking that probably also could have assisted me there. Because um, my pinholes aren't quite lined up. Then after you drill those... What I did is I just took a Dremel. I got like a little, like literally the cheapest Dremel you can buy off of uh, Amazon. Got it years ago to remove the uh, thread protector on my Vepr. And that Dremel tool has removed so many thread protectors and helped with this build. So it was a good investment. I think it was like 25 bucks. <clears throat> but then you just come along, you see this tab that sticks up here. And you just Dremel that down so it's flush. Dremel it down so it's flush. These two little tabs back here as well. And then your last part, and you would take this out of the jig for the last part, but you can see this channel here. Um, and you're gonna Dremel that out. And I just put like a little sandpaper type bit on my Dremel, and this was probably the quickest part for me. You wanna be really careful not to go too far out to the edges or too far down. I will say at least for me, um, and I believe this came with the factory um, recoil spring and guide rod. But out here, you can kind of get so the light can see in there. You kind of see a little ledge to the side here. And I can say for the sides, you're going to want to take it all the way out to that ledge and maybe even a little then some. Um, my recoil spring was really catching up on there. Still kind of is. Um, I've given up fine tuning it. I will show you why I'm mine. But this is the black one, obviously. Um, so just kind of show you, that's pretty much all you get in your kit. It's all you need. The two sections of rail. So, this poor guy here, and everything has been safety checked. I keep forgetting I have a tripod now. <laughs> what? Oh, this is a first. Wow, I, that's weird. That was the first time that's happened. I have no clue what happened there. Huh. Okay, see there, it's kind of catching up a little bit. I just kind of gave up taking any more um, plastic off of this because, <laughs> yeah, look at that. That side's not so bad, but my pinholes just did not effing line up at all. Like this one here, just fine. But these two little guys, I they they just weren't close to where they needed to be. So I just took you know a really small like little pin file. I bought a little, once again, a little cheap multi set file, um, little kit off of Amazon for this. But I took a little fine file and just slowly filed it up because the hole was too far down. But now I've got a Glock that looks like it was made by Century Arms. Hell, they probably would have even done a better job. So, that's where I'm at on this. And I had to pound the living hell out of those pins to even get them in there. Um, and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to this. Like that channel needs to come down because the guide rod's catching up on it also. <laughs> that's... Uh. Oh, there's even like a nasty delay in that. Basically, what I think this is... Whew, um, 
my trigger bar, I think I need to bend that, adjust that. It's just, I think it's rubbing up on the frame. This is my first Glock. So my first Glock I built, probably not the best route to go, but that's the route I went. And with these pins being that hard to get in and out, I mean, it's just like, I, I'm just gonna, and I don't, like this might be safe to shoot, but I'm not going to, I'm just, it's horrible, man. I don't know how much movements that's, that's gonna cause. So what I told myself, you know, these frames are like around 150 bucks. I'll just get another one, start over. Um, but, um, then I got some other projects working here. So I'm trying to get funds going for those. So ultimately what I'm going to do is this is the last time you're going to, well, see the slide or the frame, I guess, guys. Um, so I've got another buddy, not the, not this guy, but another guy. He wants to start building one of these. And so I was like, Hey, I've got this $350 uh, Wolf, W-U-E-L-F, um, slide, I'm willing to sell, I mean, I like it, uh, I got this on eBay, they have several different options, they do have, um, some that are red dot ready, um, came with the barrel, it's a match grade, I think, or a competition grade, uh, those are two separate things, I can't even begin to tell you the difference between a match grade and a competition grade, so I just wanted to show you this because you see a lot of people posting their videos about their P80 builds and they look pimp and super dope. And I was like, why am I not seeing anyone screw these up? I know it's happening. And uh, yeah, it happened to me. Uh, maybe I'm just an idiot. Maybe people are just like, oh, I'm not going to share the videos of my screwed up ones and just showed you the ones that came out well. So I just kind of want to show you this. I'm not saying that these are garbage or junk. Hell, I want to get another one and do it again. I'm just letting you guys know realistically there is a chance to screw it up now i do think that the big problem with this very well could have been with me taking this frame out of the jig before i drill these holes now like i said i put it in there you know i really paid attention to how it was going in there how the top section was lining up um but maybe it just needs to stay in that jig because i will say um because i took it out of the jig like two or three times um to show myself as well as um, some of my friends that were curious about these. And I kind of feel like as each time I put it in that jig was getting a little looser. Um, so if you do get one of these, just err on the side of caution. Don't take it out of the jig. And maybe it was just me and I just screwed these up. Maybe you're fine to take them out of the jig. If you guys have built one of these, by God, give me comments because I am a total virgin on this stuff here. So just wanted to give you a quick video of this. Um, like I said, a lot of people aren't aware of these. Now I will say, if you get a lower parts kit, try, I would recommend not getting one with the extended mag release. That sounds good as an option, but these P80s, it already comes down quite a bit. That thing sticks out more than Cindy Crawford's mole on her lip. I mean, look at that. Like maybe if you have a standard frame, that would be fine, but that's just, that's way too much. Um, so that was one of the things I was planning on doing is just getting a different safety lever. I'm sure you could grind it down. I was just going to replace it. Um, did like the extended slide release there. Um, and then the mag that I purchased, this is an actual Glock mag. I got this in their flat dark earth as well. You know, I knew it wasn't going to be a hundred percent match. It's far from it, but just so you guys know, if you're planning on doing this and you want to get a, the Glock mags. I mean, it's not bad. I think it looks better than a black one there, you know? Um, so, and my original thoughts too was kind of go out like an all out Boba Fett build. And I was like, you know how he's kind of like little bits of different color, like a little piece of red here, a little piece of blue there. I was thinking about doing that with some of these controls. And then I was like, in my head, it looked awesome. But I was like, you know, I bet in real life, it's just going to look like a damn clown car. So, and also then I was like, I just need to build this damn thing and make sure it works before I start buying different barrels, you know, upgrading the sights, which I was all planning on doing. I was like, I just need to make sure it works. I'm glad I did it now. You know, I, the slide um, it came with all the internals, your standard sights and the barrel. Um, and it was like 350 on eBay. I've never fired this. I'm selling it to my buddy for 300. So I'm taking a 50 buck loss. That sucks. And this frame, I, I don't know, it's just going to sit in the closet for now, and I'm going to get another one, 
you know, start over. I don't know if this is something that's fixable, salvageable. Um, cause then I was thinking, I was like, well, I'll just get rid of it. I was like, well, frack, now it's a frame. Like, don't I technically need to take this apart in three pieces before I dispose of it? So it's almost more of a hassle. You know, I might have to be looking up on an ATF website how to dispose of a frame. I don't know. Just throw it in the recycling, right? I wouldn't want to do that. I'd feel bad to find out some gangbanger for whatever reason should find that frame and then mugged or worse killed someone with it. So like I said, I've got a bad experience with this. Not really bad. Learning experience. So yeah, let's label this one under the learning experience. Um, I'm still excited about it. Just, I just want you guys to go into it realistically. You know, no, your first time around, you might burn 150, 140 bucks on the frame. You might screw it up. The other thing is I see a lot of people saying, oh, I want to get one of these. You, I could get a Glock for so cheap. No, you're smoking crack, dude. Um, you can easily get a used Glock 19 cheaper than going this route. Now, I see a lot of like budget P80 builds and stuff like that. And, and that might, like even those I find hard to believe, you could build one of those for cheaper than, you know, a used Glock. You know, maybe getting parts on sale, getting them at the right time and stuff. I, you, you could probably get close. But you're not going to get something like this. You know, 350 bucks for the slide. I could have got a used Glock for 350 bucks. You know, then you throw in the other 140, 150 for the frame, 50 bucks for an internal parts kit. And if you're starting out fresh and never had a Glock, well, you're, you know, at least 25 bucks for a Mac. So, not cheaper than getting a used one. Not saying that's always the case. I'm just saying realistically, for your average Joe, you're a lot better getting just a used Glock if, uh, that's the th reasoning you're thinking. I just wanted to get one, just kind of have something custom. You guys know I've got all the surplus. So I get excited with the few modern firearms I have because I actually get to do stuff to them without feeling bad. You know, this is kind of the route I was going with it. and um, a Minor setback, but uh, like I said, I'm just going to throw this one out maybe and just start over. But I just wanted to show you that. Um, I know I was saying a lot of friends were like, oh, why would you get one of those that are junk? They don't work. You know, this video is not the best example. <laughs> this is just an honest video, guys. This this was my first attempt at it. And I will say the little tabs up here, I filed those down. You know, it's almost zen-like, just sitting back, filing away, knowing you're going to get an awesome Glock in the end. Um, it was kind of fun going through the building process. You know, and then throwing all the parts in the lower. For someone that's never even disassembled a Glock, um, I had no issues um, assembling all these pieces into this lower other than, you know, the pinholes not lining up and me having to pound the holy living hell out of them with a hammer, but that's me, not the gun. Now, the, uh, these slides here, you can buy these, um, completely stripped. Actually, that's what my buddy over here did. Um, it's just the slide, all the internal sights, everything, um, you've got to put in yourself. So I did not go that route, so I can't say how easy that is for someone that's never disassembled the Glock. Um, I just kind of went this route, mostly <laughs> because I didn't want to screw with trying to line up the sides, guys. That, seriously, that's, yeah, that's why. I wasn't nervous about all the other crap. Just didn't want to dick with that. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I probably saved a little bit of money doing that. Plus, you know, uh, the guy that put all the internals in this, he wasn't doing it for his first time. I hope not, um, which is how I would have been. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this. Um, like I said, this is the P80 lower 80% uh, build. There are other companies that offer them. P80, they're kind of the main ones. It is it is who I'd probably recommend at least your first time um, going around with. This internal kit, um, I believe is actually a Wolf internal parts kit, which is the same company as the slide um, and the barrel. I don't know if they actually make the barrel or just buy them. There's the crowning there. It does not have polygonal rifling, which is kind of a bummer. That's one thing I I do think is cool about the Glocks. So I've got some guns with polygonal rifling, and they're just really easy to clean out. A lot of people talk about how they're more accurate and stuff, but they don't really mention how it's just it's easy to get all the crud out of there. There's nothing building up between your lands and grooves. So, um, and like I said, this is the Wolf. Yeah, I already said that slide. This was advertised as having a battle-worn nickel boron finish. Um... Which, you know, I was familiar with Nickel Boron just from seeing advertised for AR bolt carriers and stuff. And I like the Battle Worn idea because um, if I get a little bit of a scratch on it or something, 
you know, I figured it'd kind of blend in. It's not really battle worn. It almost looks more like it was taken off the production line before they did like the final buffing. <laughs> like we got a little bit of wear on the edges up here that looks cool. Um, but no, I, I still like this. I think it's a pretty, pretty cool looking slide. They have some different variations, some with the serrations up front as well. So there's my experience with the uh, P80 build guys, my honest P80 review. Um, just kind of give you guys a little insight. Maybe you've never heard of one of these and I expose it to you. Now go off and have fun researching it and building your own. Or maybe you've been thinking about making one of these and you're like, do people ever even screw up on these? Because I don't see that. I did. <laughs> and like I said, I mean, maybe this would be fine to shoot, you know, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just not going to mess with it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you uh, at least enjoy this video a little bit. Got a little bit of information out of it. I do appreciate you watching, and if you did enjoy this, feel free to like and subscribe. All right, guys, have a good one. Stay shiny. And gals, gals too.